many of you know, I recently spent one month in the Philippines. And in this video, I'm going to review my first ever international vacation and let you know if you should go to Philippines. But first, we'll start off with some basics. The first thing to know is that the Philippines is a group of islands in Asia, and I think there's about 3,000 islands. And what I thought was really interesting about the Philippines is that every single island and every single province speaks a different local dialect and it's basically like a whole nother language. Another thing you should know is that Philippines has two official languages. The first one is Tagalog and the second one is English. And that's one of the best perks of the Philippines is that no matter where you go, people will at least know at least some English. Uh, most people know a lot and are fluent, but some speak a little bit of English. The next thing you should know is the price. One of my favorite things about the Philippines that I love is $1 equals 50 pesos. So it's like pretty much everything is on sale. And so when I went there, I was able to go to like restaurants or to the mall and just buy pretty much whatever I wanted and it would be half price a third of the price, quarter of the price, I go to four star, five star restaurants and get just, just the best food and only spend like 20 or 40 bucks. I mean it's pretty crazy to go somewhere, especially to a great restaurant and buy almost everything on the menu and only pay like 20, 30 bucks. It really is crazy. Another thing you should know about the Philippines is the malls are incredible. Um, when I was in Baguio, which is my favorite city in the Philippines, the mall there is amazing. There's a movie theater, there's a grocery store, there's four floors, there's an observation deck with, with views of the city, there's all these restaurants around the world, there's just, there's everything you could ask for in the mall. And that's another thing you should know about the Philippines. It is a developing country, so most places don't take debit or credit card. But the only places that do are places like the mall and the hotels and upscale restaurants. Other than that, um, most places won't take card. And since it's a developing country, um, they take pretty much cash everywhere. And Twenty dollars in America is like having a hundred dollars in the Philippines. Another thing people should know about the Philippines is that if you're, as soon as you land down in Manila, it's super hot. So what I did was the two main areas I went to, Baguio and Tagaytay, are known for having great weather. And for me, I had a much better time there because because as soon as I landed in Manila, I spent one day in Angela City which is an hour north of Manila and it was like as soon as you walk outside you start sweating and it's just like you're in a sauna and for me <laughs> it was it was tough like, like it feels like you're walking outside in an oven and speaking of Manila I would say at least for me personally Manila is the worst part of the Philippines because Manila is also the poorest region where there are the most scams where I felt the most unsafe and the traffic is insane in Manila. I mean yeah sure there are rich areas like Makati and things that are more westernized but I would say to have the best experience in the Philippines if you want to have the best experience in the Philippines do some research first think about it why, why are you going there is it for the beaches is it to explore is it to go to the cold places like what I did and then and then just find somewhere to go other than Manila because if I stayed in Manila one month I, I could not recommend the Philippines and I wouldn't have any time. Let's talk about the transportation because transportation in the Philippines is insane and what I mean by that is I can't I can't believe the driving there. In America it's just normal driving you know everyone's in their lane like this but in the Philippines, it's absolute chaos. Like, people are driving like this, people are going this way, people are coming every way. Like, I would never try driving in the Philippines. I don't think I would last five minutes. I think Filipino drivers, if they came here, they get like arrested and get their license taken in five minutes. I right, talk about the types of transportation. Talk about them from the cheapest to the most expensive. 
And so in the Philippines, um, the cheapest type of transportation is called a jeepney, which is pretty much like an old hollowed out bus with two benches in there. And then you pay like, I think it was 11 pesos, and you pretty much ride it like a bus. You just hop on and then like, you ride it somewhere and then you get off. And um, it's honestly a great, it's honestly a great way to save money. But I don't recommend it because sometimes they are so crowded and there's like 20 people in there. It's insane. I, I honestly only ride them when they're empty. And the second cheapest and the most dangerous is the trike. And so a trike is basically like you have a motorcycle and then there's a sidecar. Then you sit in the sidecar and then he takes you somewhere. And those range anywhere from like 50 pesos minimum to the most. I might have gotten ripped off, but one time I paid 600 pesos, which is $12. But um, I mean, it's $12. I'm not gonna complain. But um, and I remember um, the guy Tai has by far the best trikes. They're more like golf carts, and there's a lot of space. But when I was in Baguio, some of these side cars, I was I was in there like this. And, and I have my fiance with me too. Like it was so uncomfortable. I really did not like it, but I mean, most of the time that's the only way to get around. So what is this? A tricycle. <laughs> I caught you, huh? Andy Wong. I'm a Ganda Co. And then third, we'll talk about the taxi. And taxis are available usually only in Manila, but Baguio, interestingly enough, um, they didn't really have trikes, they only had taxis there. So the tiny one must have been in Tagai Thai. And then there's a bus, which is you can either go to a bus terminal or just like wave and then the bus will pick you up. And those are really cheap, like if you're not going very far, you can pay like I think 20 pesos. But if you're going far, most we pay to us, I think, 300 pesos. And my favorite is the van. So, in Asia, they have these vans called the High Ace Van. And these vans are crazy. So, it's like, it's like they only open the door on one side. And 12 people fit in this van. And they go so fast. Like, it's crazy. Like, I'm honestly surprised how people drive. A comfier than a bus. They'll get you somewhere. I think for us it was like an hour faster than taking a bus. And it's the same price, if not a little bit more. And that's another thing that I want to tell you guys about is that if you want to look up information on going somewhere, lockdown details and all that sort of thing, just go online. We asked the people at the bus terminal. Um, like for example, I'm gonna tell you guys in an upcoming video about Sagada. That was that was by far my worst experience in Philippines. That'll be a separate video. In that experience, we went to the bus station and said, hey, we're going to Sagada. Is there anything we need to do to get there? And they said, no, just, just pay and then you can go there. And that was wrong. So do your research online first. You can't talk about the Philippines without talking about the girls. And wow, I was, I was blown away. Like, Compared to where I live in the Northwest, Philippines is heavy. It really is like you rolled the clock back about 60 years in the Philippines. I mean, the girls are prettier, sweeter. They want to cook for you. They want to help you. They want a family. If if you're a man and you're dissatisfied with how things are in America, in Western Europe, I can 100% recommend the Philippines. One of the most important things you need to know if you're a single man is, for me, I went there to see if um, the girl I was talking to for over a year to see if things would work. And yeah, I would say they definitely do work. But if I was single, I could go there and honestly have a different girl every day. Different girl every hour. And I'm not talking about paying either. It's just hop on Tinder and see for yourself. The best way I can describe it is like this. In America, I would say for a lot of people, dating as a man is like, you walk into a gas station with $2. I mean, you'll get something, 
might not be what you want, might not be what you're hoping for, but you'll get something. But in the Philippines, it's like, you walk into the dollar store with $100, you could get anything you want, you could get multiple if you want, like, it really is the exact opposite. I'd say it's incredible. Go see for you. Everything is great in the Philippines. I think there are three major problems with the Philippines. Number one has to be the weather. I mean, other than Baguio and the guy died, the Philippines is super hot. It's like usually 90 degrees full humidity, 80 degrees full humidity. But that's why I love Baguio and Tagaytay. Baguio and Tagaytay, Baguio especially, same size as Portland, same weather as Portland. The only difference is, is that, I imagine Mount Hood, Baguio is like right on top. Or imagine any, any mountain close to you, Baguio is right on top. Tagaytay is, um, Tagaytay is great. It's usually about 10 degrees cooler, no humidity. There's a volcano nearby, there's um, great views, great restaurants. I'm going to have videos on Baguio since that time. And problem number two, the one I hate the most in the Philippines is the cockroaches, man. Yuck! I really don't like them. And they're everywhere. I saw cockroaches everywhere except for the mall and the hotel. That means everywhere else you see them. It's so crazy. It's like during the day, you don't really see them. But at night, they're everywhere. Everywhere. In the park, I was eating um, lechon minok, which is the rotisserie chicken and rice with my fiance. And out comes like this giant cockroach and tries to jump on her. Disgusting. You look to the right, you see them rustling in the bushes. Oh, I don't like them. I remember her uncle, there was a cockroach, came inside and he said, look, want to see a magic trick? He grabbed the cockroach, opened his hand, it didn't move, and then he just went outside and threw it outside. I couldn't believe it. That's something an American would never do. You know, I was so surprised because they're everywhere in the Philippines. And yeah, I, I hate to say this, but one time there was even one in my hair. Oh, I don't like things about that. I remember I was sitting at the kitchen table and then I felt something in my hair and then I heard a crunch and then it fell out of my hair and I was like... <sighs> but, that's not but. If you go to the Philippines, there's something called bygone you can buy and that stuff is so strong. Like, this bug spray, let's say you spray it around the edge of a room, um, cockroaches will crawl out and then they'll just flip over and die. Like, bygone is super strong. And as you can tell, I'm back in my apartment. Don't worry, there is none here. I remember I sprayed some bygone, I walked through it, I sprayed some in my suitcase. I made sure I am not bringing any cockroaches here. No way. And number three is the government. The government in the Philippines is awful. It's even worse than the government here. The government in the Philippines is so bad, it makes Joe Biden look like George Washington. And it's like the things that they have to go through there, like all the bureaucracy, all of the red tape, all of just the ridiculous, there's all the extra steps for everything. Like, I mean, the Philippines is a place with so much potential. Great people, nice people, they know English. Like, if they just had a good government, they could become a thriving country. But until they have a good government, I think the Philippines will stay the same. Now I'm going to answer your question. Should you go to the Philippines? Well, if you're like me, you want to try something new, try a place that's under the radar, Try, if you're tired of dating in America and you want to see what it's like overseas, if you want to save money, eat some of the best food of your life at incredibly low prices, I would say yes. 
100%, you need to go with Philippines. But if, you, if you're in a relationship, if you have a family or something, would I recommend you go with Philippines? Maybe. And I say that because I haven't been to the beaches there. I haven't been to the places where all the foreigners go for tourism. Where I went is where the locals go for tourism. I went to Baguio because it's the summer capital of the Philippines. I went to Tagaytay because I just did research and found it. But I don't know anything about like other islands or Cebu or Boracay, Palawan, Chargao. Like, I, I honestly don't know. And I will say one last thing. In the Philippines, you need to lower your expectations. I remember one time, I saw an ice cream shop. And then when I went there, I still can't believe they did this. But they quite literally, <laughs> they bought the tubs of ice cream from the store. And then they were selling you, they were selling you store-bought ice cream by the scoop. I couldn't believe it. I have, I have many more stories and memories of the Philippines. Maybe that'll be for another day, another video. But, have you been to the Philippines? What do you think about the Philippines? Tell your local Filipino, Salamat.